Abraham is the author of The Entrepreneur's Solution, Getting the Mindset and Mechanics of a Millionaire, and founder of Business Breakthrough Academy. Entrepreneur Academy, Business Break... So I stole a lot of my stuff from him. And Thoughtpreneur. There's a new word for us today. He is a highly acclaimed business speaker, seminar leader, and business and success strategist. He's also a pretty good CPA. Driven by his nine ideals of legacy, Mel believes the, that entrepreneurs hold the key to economic growth in the new economy. As society is looking for political solutions, what is truly needed is an entrepreneurial solution. It is through his entrepreneurial mindset, creativity, and innovation that will allow us to rise above the current challenges. Big hand, Mel Abraham. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was almost like a monthly call with Alan. Dude, get your calendar out. Can we make it this date? And, uh, and so this time, to get us on this day, I think we did it, we did it way, way in advance. And so it's, it's an honor to be here. He's, uh, Alan's told me a ton about some of the people in this room. And, and as he said, I'm, I am a CPA by education, but I, I successfully completed the 12-step program, and I'm healed. <laughs> and sorry about that, Trevor. So Trevor. Trevor, who came, came here, I actually gave him his first job in the accounting industry uh, two decades ago, I think it was. Yeah, so, um, so it's nice to see. I see a, lot, a number of friends and, and family here. So here's the thing. What I've started to do, what I've spent a lot of my time doing is, is, although I am a CPA, I'm an entrepreneur by exhilaration. I've had the opportunity to travel the country, travel the world, working with entrepreneurs. I've built and, and built my own businesses, built, bought and sold businesses, had the opportunity to sit on boards of directors. I still sit on some boards of directors. One of the businesses was started in the 1800s and still exists today, six generations later. And, and, I, and the nice thing about doing this is I get a chance to, to, to sit and speak and talk to, to, to folks in, in functions like this and start to understand what's going on with them. Where, what, where, where it lands, and so many people are standing here looking at things and saying, we're on the precipice of disaster, and if we would believe the media and the fear mongers, that's what they would say. We're on the precipice of disaster. I don't buy into that. I don't buy into it in the sense that, that I think possibility exists all around us. It exists all around us. The opportunities that we have today are great. The opportunities that we have have today are enormous and they just are just in different places. So if we're if we're still trying to think about business as usual, that's where the challenge is. It's about looking at business and trying to re refigure, figure out how we're going to put it together again, how we're going to deal with it differently. I started my entrepreneurial journey many, many years ago. At first I thought it was when I started at, at, at one of the big accounting firms. I left left college um, you know, after being in the fraternity, I left college and, and went to one of the large accounting firms in downtown Los Angeles. And I just remember that, that I was sitting there years into it, and I was on the fast track to partnership there. And it was a 1030 at night. I was on the 28th floor of the City Corp Plaza building, staring out at the skyline of downtown Los Angeles, which I happen to think is beautiful. But in that moment, in that moment, I stared out there and I realized, this is not my journey. This is not what I was meant to do. I watched them take people that have worked 10, 12 years in, that, in the firm and then say, guess what? We're not going to make you partner because you're not partnership material. And I, I literally, that moment, walked into the partner's office, who's also working late, looked at him and said, I got to tell you something. He said, what's that? I said, I quit. <laughs> he says, what? I said, I quit. He says, why? And I said, this isn't the life that I'm here to create. This is a life that was put on me because this is what people say you do when you get an accounting degree. And he says, well, when's your last day? I said, tonight's my last night. <laughs> and then I did something I would never recommend any of you do. I went and cashed in my retirement. 
And I left and went to Japan for five months and lived, which is a whole other story. <laughs> so, but it was the one place that I could be where I was not only the, the hairiest, but the tallest, too. <laughs> yeah. So. The, the deal is that, that I realized, now they came to me and said, we will double whatever you want, and, and, and we want to keep you. And I realized, this isn't about money. It's about life. And what we fail to think about in business is that every business equation that we look at, with all the pluses and minuses and equal signs, there's one aspect in there that we seem to ignore as entrepreneurs. Every business equation has lifestyle as part of it. And what we, what we tend to do is, whether we're professionals in a business trying to build a career, or we're businesses trying to build a business, is we spend all the time putting things together and putting a business together, and then we take and say, where are the cracks? And we fill in the cracks with our life. The whole concept of work-life balance. And I would tell you that it's a fallacy. There's life. That's it. We may as well design it. Businesses are created to support our society and our community and our life and our dreams. So why not intentionally design it to make it so? We were talking, we were just talking, uh, Maria and I were just talking just before I came up and, about this whole concept, is that many entrepreneurs, and me included, that's why I left. But even after I left, I still made the same, same mistakes, me included is many times we, we run in full, full tilt into a business and we start to build it because that's our passion and that's what we want to do. And then all of a sudden we get three, four, five, ten years down the road and the ship we're on is hitting the rapids and hitting the rocks. And we don't know how we got there. And we've got a monster that we're wrestling with that now what used to be passionate, what used to be enjoyable is unbearable. And so we need to think about it in that context and wonder where that comes from and try to be more intentional. I'm OK with you wanting to build a business and say, I'm going to invest my life into that business, as long as it's an intentional choice, an intentional decision, a conscious choice. And it's not something that you just did, and all of a sudden you say, I don't know how I got here. Certainly things come up. You know, when we look at, when we look at this, there's possibility at every turn. There's opportunity at every turn. And it's not about those that are strong. I've been obsessed since I left that time frame and, and really trying to understand what makes a business great, what makes an entrepreneur great, what makes, what makes something grow, what makes it die. And it's that, it's that process that have, has come to some of the things that I'm going to talk about. Now, I've, now, you know, Alan says you got 20, 30 minutes. So I'm, I'm going to try and pack a lot in. So buckle the seatbelt. We got, we got some time, I guess, in September that I'm going to get a chance to talk. Then in September, I'm going to focus primarily on what I call the nine ideals of creating a legacy business and a legacy life. And it's the, it's the process that I use. To, to make my business decisions. It's how I created business. And it's something that came about because I had someone sitting in my office one day, and he says, why do you do this? You're traveling around. I just told him that I crossed 2.4 million miles in United Airlines, TSA, in Los Angeles Airport. Know me when I walk in? Okay. And, and I said, I've had a chance to watch people that get to their waning years of life. And they look at themselves in the mirror and they say, is that it? Is that it? It's not the way life's supposed to be lived. We're supposed to get at the end, get, get to those waning years of our life and go, man, that was a hell of a race. That's what it's about. 